Hey troops, so today's video we're reacting to is why no one wants to fight the A-10 Warthog. We're going to get straight into this one, guys. You know the drill in the introductions by now. Let's go. Five reasons why no nation on Earth wants to fight the A-10 Warthog in a war. I mean, do we even need five reasons, guys? This... This bit of kit is probably one of the most renowned military, um, you know, air weapons of, of all time. The the sound of this thing is renowned around the world, isn't it, really? And it's the number one get me out of jail free card, really. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Have you seen the, seen the face that they've got on the front there? I mean, there's no need for that, is there? It's cool, but it's scary as it is, guys. One simply does not mess with the A-10 Thunderbolt and get away with it. Call her the A-10 Thunderbolt, or more affectionately, A-10 Warthog, but the U.S. Air Force Close Air Support Avenger will take a beating and still find a way to shower you with her low-altitude armor-piercing ammo. That sound, guys. The A-10 is one of the most revered pieces of equipment that our fighting men and women have at their disposal, and its track record proves it. Mm. The 30mm GAU 8A cannon that sits on the front of the A-10 with its barrel protruding from the nose is one of the heaviest automatic cannons ever mounted on an aircraft. Since the pilots are protected by titanium armor, which also protects parts of the flight control system, the A-10 can linger longer in the battle zone in all kinds of conditions, including low visibility and darkness. The A-10 Thunderbolt has earned its reputation thanks to the bravery of her pilots and her performance above the battlefield. Yeah, that's the thing. This uh, the the A-10 Warthog. It, it's it's not just a it's not just a bit of kit that can get the job done. We've got to we've got to. You know, give praise to the pilots that, um, that 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 use these things, that 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 use them in the skies. All right, they're extremely skilled individuals. Okay, I mean, you've seen that cannon on the front. Obviously, you've got to point the the nose of this thing to whatever you want to be firing at. It's um, it's hard enough as it is fi flying the thing, but never mind. You know, firing that cannon and all of the weapon systems, and then you obviously got to think about evading potential um, enemy threats at the same time. It's a uh, it's a tough job, guys, and a one that um, not many people can do at all. We're proud to give a little respect back to those who've served our great country and share a few of the reasons why the A-10 Warthog is an aircraft that should never be taken lightly. One, armament. Here's the total count. A 30 millimeter GAU 8A cannon, up to 16,000 pounds of mixed ordnance on eight underwing and three under fuselage pylon stations, a 500 pound MK82 and 2,000 pound MK84 series low high drag bombs, incendiary cluster bombs, effects munitions, mine dispensing munitions, an AGM-65 Maverick and AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, plus a Gatling gun that's specifically designed to fire high explosive incendiary and armor-piercing depleted uranium rounds at a rate of 3,900 rounds per minute. That's... <laughs> 3,900 rounds a minute. It's, um, it's that Ivan Drago moment, isn't it? Whatever he hits, he destroys. A serious aircraft with a bad attitude. You want to shoot at this bad beast? Good luck with that. Jesus. Total annihilation, guys. Two, survivability. The A-10 has a honeycomb panel design that makes up the leading edges of the wing and tail, making them more resistant to battle damage. Interestingly, the front landing gear retracts under the wings while still sticking somewhat out of the fuselage, giving the Warthog a way to touch down with its landing gear up. This aircraft can survive multiple direct hits from- Wow, that's pretty cool. So even if even if the landing gear fails to, to operate effectively, it can still land with the landing gear face in, in, its, in its upright position. That, that's good news for the pilots, trust me. Armor-piercing and high-explosive projectiles, 
while its self-sealing fuel cells are protected by internal and external foam. Like in 2003, when Captain Kim Campbell successfully brought her Warthog back from a close air support mission near Baghdad, her 75th Fighter Squadron A-10 was hit by ground fire, taking extensive damage to the wow. starboard vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, aft fuselage, and engine. Upon sustaining the hit, the airplane became uncontrollable, rolling left, nose down. After trying several ways to regain control, she engaged the backup mechanical flight control system. The jet responded, and with some help from her wingman, she landed back at her forward base. That is awesome, man. That is awesome, and we don't hear enough about female pilots, and there you go. There's one literally flying a damaged airplane back from a war zone onto the airbase. Credit to her at the end of the day. Much respect. Three, range. At around 2,580 miles, the Warthog's flight range could get you from New York City to Los Angeles, California. All right, so that's that's a lot longer than I thought, guys. All right, it, and I, this vehicle, this 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 airplane, is not really designed for long distance. It's designed for for short missions, support missions. It's going create create as much damage as you possibly can, get back to base. So the fact that it can fly about 2,500 miles, that's that's impressive, guys. I'm really impressed with that still. Thanks to two General Electric TF-34 GE-100 turbofan engines, the aircraft can achieve about 450 miles an hour, or Mach 0.75, making the Thunderbolt fast enough to be ultra-deadly. It's really agile as well. 4. Support The A-10 Warthog has immeasurable value to our U.S. troops on the ground and plays a critical role in our military strategy in the Middle East and around the world. Arizona Representative Ruben Gallego said, I'm glad we were able to keep this fleet fully operational and I will continue to fight to preserve this aircraft to ensure that the warfighter on the ground gets their air support. Mm. The A-10 was specifically designed for close air support missions. Its large and varied ordnance, long loiter time above the battlefield, accurate weapons delivery and unfriendly field capability are more than well developed to be at the forefront of the ground forces around it i agree and this is my thought a question to you guys in the comments um i wonder what the next variant of the a10 is going to look like i know they're already developing um different variants of the ac 130 i wonder what the next a a10 is going to look like i mean this is already deadly what could they improve i mean in terms of its range it's already pretty good it does what it needs to do does it need to be any longer i'd argue not its capability to get um, firepower onto the ground quick time as effectively and as uh, as you know as dangerously as it can. It, it it this thing and can fire and and cause mass amounts of damage. Does that really? Where, where can we improve on that? I mean, the only thing I can really think of is automation, making this a completely automated, um, pilotless um, vehicle. Does that make sense? No pilots completely automated almost drone like but i don't i don't see what else they can do to this thing let me know in the comments if you know as the u.s air force says the low altitude safety and targeting enhancement upgrade provided computerized weapon aiming equipment an autopilot and a ground collision warning system which includes multi-band <clears throat> communications global positioning system and inertial navigation systems infrared and electronic countermeasures against air-to-air -air and air-to-surface threats in other words, try to shoot at our ground troops, and we will not only shoot back, but unleash hell on you exactly where you stand. Yeah. So it's just a bad idea, guys, to get in trouble with this thing. Simple as that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take you out. It's going to take you out quickly. Five. Grit. A-10 pilots have night vision capability to conduct missions during any hour after dark. The A-10 was also designed with a fast maintenance turnaround time in mind to keep it on the battlefield. Things like damaged wing skins that can be replaced in the field, the cannon creating so much smoke while it's being fired that it looks like a forest fire, and a Gatling gun that fires rounds the size of beer bottles makes the Warthog deserve its moniker, the Cross of Death. 
Mm. Certainly the most important thing to remember is the pilots who fly these winged wonders and the ground crews that maintain them. Absolutely. Our fighting men and women are the real heroes, and the A-10 Thunderbolt is just another tool in the fight for freedom and a tool that works quite well, thank you. Hell Contemporary yeah. Air Force F-15 and F-16 pilots like to joke that A-10s don't have instrument panel clocks, they have calendars. At the time, the Air Force's high-tech fighter faction, which included most of Air Force leadership, considered the twin-engined straight-wing attack airplane an anachronistic dud, unfit to operate in the modern battlefield where it was supposed to kill Russian tanks. Whether you're talking about a sophisticated stealth bomber or flying machine gun, it's never easy to bring a new warplane into being. Mm. How the A-10 program survived its first few years is a complicated story. Former A-10 pilot and author Colonel Arden B. Dahl, retired, contends that the Thunderbolt II made it to production by prevailing in two key political battles. Between the maneuverability and the survivability, the A-10 Fleet Fighter Squadron has taken on Operation Enduring Freedom, Desert Storm, and ISIS wherever they may be, making it one of our best weapons mm -hmm. in the fight for freedom around the globe. So I wonder what the political standpoint was for why this why this airplane was, was struggled to kind of become what it is today. I wonder what the drawbacks were on that and what they were thinking, because it is formidable and it's been nothing but successful around the globe. There's another thing I've just noticed. Do you know how they said this thing can land with its landing gear in the upright position? You obviously wouldn't want to do that if you still had these bombs on attached to the undercarriage, would you, of the wing? Because obviously they're going to potentially blow up, aren't they? If you look at there. Awesome. Look at that, man. All right, so you can do refueling in the air as well. Always handy. Awesome, man. Well, guys, I think we've seen enough of that here. So, no, why no one wants to fight the A-10 Warthog? I think it's simple, really. You know, th there's five reasons there that they give us. I think the one that stands out to me, really, is the fact that it's, uh, it's, it's armament, what it can do in an aggressive position you know once provoked whether it's the troops on the ground or the um the 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 crafts in the sky this thing can respond very quickly and extremely deadly it can get those bombs it can get those munitions it can get the gatlin gun it can get all of these things in a quick succession from the air to the ground and it can do it with pinpoint accuracy as well that to me is a very 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 deadly weapon system okay and again this is just a tool for the um behind for the for the pilots to use the real skill set belongs with a pilot so that's where my respect is thrown today guys okay so respect to any year 10 pilot out there thank you for your service and if you like this video please like share and subscribe guys drop me a comment below as well do you think the a10 warthog is the most deadly weapon system in the air peace